What would you say to somebody that thinks, I don't want to eat clean because I don't want to give up fun? So mm-hmm. there's that other extreme yeah. of the intensity of, no, I don't, I don't, like clean eating is for weird people or like <laughs> other people than me, but yet their health is being sacrificed and all they're doing is doing things that make them happy or mm-hmm. in my opinion, I think it's more that they don't want to change. Yeah. Yeah. I think that change, it's easy to be resistant to change um, until you start and then you feel Once you start eating healthy and exercising, I feel like anyone who does that kind of realizes, whoa, this makes me feel good. What was I Um, Why didn't I not do this earlier? Yeah. Yeah. uh Uh-huh. So I feel like you kind of have to get over that hump of not wanting to start. And then once you do, I feel like most people kind of realize, oh, this does make me feel good. I always say you want to you might not feel great the first few weeks or maybe the first month, but after that, I feel yeah. like once you start actually feeling better and noticing a difference. Um, You'll never go back. Yeah. Have you seen the video where this this guy is trying to tell people that their videos, um, even if they're only being seen by a couple hundred, maybe mm-hmm. a thousand, and in the world of scalability, that's not huge numbers, but if you would think of those people in an audience, Mm-hmm. Or if we were if we were live right now and and all of your followers were seeing this, how many people that would look like? It starts to get maybe scary, but also the magnitude of it is much more real. Mm-hmm. So I think we get used to seeing like I don't know what does Kim Kardashian have a hundred million, two hundred million, <laughs> three hundred million. Crazy. Like if you put those people in a space, it's mm-hmm. not even fathomable. Yeah. A thousand people in a space is a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ten thousand. I've seen some of your videos get hundreds of thousands, millions of. It's a lot of people, and I think that's um, what I've seen from your channel of not losing the integrity, but also having the uh, the vision of what you want to share with the world and how powerful that influence can be. <laughs>guys welcome back to a rest eat move podcast we're coming off of memorial day weekend and we're going to jump right into it today with a a special guest uh, a unique guest for the podcast and the theme of this podcast is about influence and so i have a very special influencer uh today that's going to share her insights on the world of influence and influencers um but before i get into that as always, if you have any questions, email us at info at ontargetliving.com. We want to hear from you of topics, themes, deeper dives that we can take. And as many of you know, I graduated from Grand Valley State University, so I have a, a fellow GVSU graduate in the house. Um, she has a certificate of Integrative um, Institute of Nutrition. Um, she's born and raised in Michigan, and um, her name is Kala. Raymond, and she has a handle of at Callas Clean Eats. And again, I'm super excited to have her on the podcast to talk about influence, talk about how she thinks of influence and specifically in the world of health influence. So thank you for joining us, Kala. Talk to the listeners about your story of getting into this space. Yeah, um, well, thank you for having me um, and for that intro. So I started on Instagram about six years ago, um, I think actually six years ago to the month, Um, and I kind of just started my account, Callus Clean Eats, for fun um, to document healthy recipes I was making, workouts I was doing, um, that kind of thing. I was getting really into health and wellness at that point, and... I just kind of thought I'd share my recipes and anything related to health and wellness on my account. So I started it then while I was in college, and it's kind of just grown into a business where I've continued to share healthy recipes, anything from um, easy and quick meals, healthy snacks. My personal favorite is the healthy desserts. 
She's got some really, uh, really tasty looking desserts that are healthy or healthier. Yeah. yeah. You know, not always probably health food, but yeah, the healthier option. <laughs> were you nervous when you first started your account? Like, yeah, you were exposing yourself to the world. Yeah, I was for sure. Um, and I, I wanted to start it for quite a while before I even did, but sure. I kind of had a hesitation there because I feel like you always are. When you put yourself out there, you're always thinking, what are other people going to think? Are they going to judge me? And I kind of just got to a point um, where I was like, I want to do this. I'm just going to do it. If people are going to, you know. When, when did you realize that it could be a career or it was becoming successful? Like what, what happened? So I had started working with a few brands while I was in college. So those first two years that I started the account. Um, and I, I remember a couple people asking me, are you going to try to take Cal's Clean Eats full time after school? What's your plan? And I was just like thinking in my head, no, like there's no way. So I graduated, I had an internship in corporate wellness and I, um, I, was kind of doing a few different things at once. I was teaching some fitness classes. I was nannying. I was doing this and that, trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I was also doing Callus Clean Eats, obviously, on the side and making some money there. Um, but I really kind of started to pick up um, after college and get more brand partnerships and kind of make it into a full-time career, um, which has been really cool. Do you find that, I mean, other influencers and that you maybe have connected with um, in person or just through being on Instagram, that it kind of that same way, kind of that organic growth, you know, I think we see some of like the one percenters that went viral and next thing you know, they have a career, but do you feel like most influencers kind of came up your way? Yeah, very... you know, I would I would say so. I think a lot of people who have been successful in social media have been doing it for a long time before, you know, social media was really even a job. Um, but I have also seen people start more recently and, like you said, have go viral and sure. have a lot of success. So I think it can go either way. Um, I'm glad I started it when I did because I feel like I have been able to build – um, like a good community within social media. And I feel like that does take time to develop. It's not, it's not usually something that happens super quickly. Sure. Um, so I think people can, you know, start whenever, but it does take time. To and kinda... it probably you got to kind of craft your own message and authenticity and do it your way versus you blow up too fast. And it may have been for the wrong reason or the video that you just were doing for fun. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's. Or if point. I mean, if, if for example, like if you you love fitness, but if you had an exercise video that blew up and you really wanted to teach people how to make these healthy desserts, it's like, well, Kayla, show me more of your fitness stuff. Yeah. And you're like, well, I really want to do the desserts. Right. Or, yeah. Uh huh. We kind of fall into that sometimes of what we want to create versus what the audience tells us to create. And that's somewhat of a dilemma sometimes. Yeah. Uh huh. And especially with Instagram and all the different algorithms, right, right. algorithms and stuff, I feel like there's kind of a balance between like, I know what might perform well. And then I also know like what I want to post and what feels authentic. To Let's me. come back to that. I think that's a very interesting thing. You said something that made me smile. Um, when you're in college, you're, you've started this page and you're thinking, no, I could never do this for a full-time job. Um, one of my questions of, what do you say to your grandparents or your neighbors or someone you meet about your job? Like, when someone <laughs> when someone says, "What do you do for a living?" How do you answer that, and how has that changed since maybe you started? Yeah, it kind of depends on the person. <laughs> um, Read the audience. Yeah, um, I mean, there's some people who. Get I it. feel like you, yeah, would understand social media being a job, and there's other people who just, you know, might not sure. be interested in it and not sure. know much about it and not think it's a, a real job, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, so it kind of depends. I think most of the time I would say I work on social media as a content creator. I work with lots of healthy brands. Um, yeah, that sounds like a that. lot, lot more like 
anyone could understand that versus yeah yeah i was thinking because um when we had our old office and my grandma was alive she'd come over and we had a gym connected there and she'd come back in my office and she'd always ask me what are you doing <laughs> it's like would you ever go to somebody that works at general motors or an assembly line or in a factory or doing manual labor and say like at their job what are you doing but it's it is the new age of the world of um yeah a way to make a living, a way to impact people. And that's why we thought it was an important topic of the power of influence is very powerful. And because of that, it can be a full-time, very uh, fulfilling, fulfilling career. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about what inspired you to get into this messaging or into the field of health. Yeah, so I, um, I grew up being active. I played tennis. I went on to play tennis in college. So that always kind of had me interested in fitness and health. Um, but I would say a main driving force was actually my dad. Um, so he passed away in 2011. Um, but he had kind of struggled with health issues for most of my life that I can remember. Um, and I can't remember which year exactly it was, but he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and the doctors basically gave him six months to live. Wow. Um, yeah, so he, he and my mom started researching alternative therapies, um, more holistic health. And at this time it really, holistic health really wasn't a thing. Um, nutrition wasn't really connected to your health, which is crazy to think. Um, but that was kind of the norm. I mean, there yeah. was obviously some people who understood it a little bit more, but it was kind of the norm that it wasn't really connected. Um, but they had started researching alternative therapies and they came across the Gerson therapy, which was basically a lot of juicing, um, eating real whole foods, um, coffee enemas, things like that. Um, so he started following it and he went back into the doctor's office. I believe it was just for a routine checkup on the cancer. Um, and they actually couldn't find it, which was crazy. It went into remission. Um, so like I mentioned, he did pass away, but he ended up living another five years wow. versus that six month original prognosis. That's incredible. Yeah. So that definitely sparked my interest quite a bit in just how much food sure. can affect the body. And sure. yeah. Yeah. That's a powerful story. And, and I wanted to, you know, share with the listeners because you can tell from your content and the stuff you create, how much love and uh, joy and also impact you think that it can have. And I think that's contagious and authentic from from viewing it versus just doing it to grab eyeballs or, mm -hmm. um, and that is the, you. when, you know, we talk about the algorithm, mm -hmm. you do have to grab eyeballs, but how do you do it in a way that's, um, you know, what you want to do? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that w we talked about off, um, camera was the impact, um, being an influencer can have, w what do you, what impact do you want to create or what are you trying to do with your channel to really help people? Cause I think, for me, helping people is kind of like at the core, not always is my intention, like I got to help people. Some days you're just trying to help yourself, but mm -hmm. how, what are you trying to accomplish with your channel from a helping people standpoint? Um, I think that I really try to show people that you can kind of just go back to basics. Um, health doesn't have to be this crazy intricate thing. A lot of times it's just going back to real whole foods, um, you know, moving your body. It doesn't have to be a crazy intense workout, like just to walk outside is benefiting your health. Um, and I think I definitely like to share, um, we talked about this a little bit before, but both the ups and the downs, you know, every day is not going to be perfect. You know, even people who's work is in health and fitness have right. off days sure. and yeah you might mess up on something or you don't stick to your healthy habits for a few days even though you know those are going to make you feel better right. um but you don't just like give up after that you know you just you get back to it the next day or whenever you have the next opportunity and i i really try to show um 
you know, that sort of realness just because I feel like it's easy to um, to mess something up, quote unquote, and then just want to quit because I feel like at the beginning of my health journey, that's kind of how I felt. I was kind of in the all or nothing mentality when some is always going to be better than nothing, you know, um, when it comes that, to those That's an interesting habits. thing you said, um, intensity of workouts and intensity of nutrition. Mm. I find it interesting uh, as I watch your content. I think the word clean eating has a dip- different interpretation to a lot of people. Was there a time where you felt like your intensity around what clean eating was or nutri- nutrition or exercise was like this one size fits all? Like share, share with us if that was ever the case. Yeah, definitely. I think um, at the beginning of when I started kind of really getting into health and nutrition, I think I really did struggle with that all or nothing mentality. And it it takes a long time to find a balance. At least it did for me. Um, but I think I definitely, you know, was struggled with, you know, being too strict with like only eating. How did you, how did you realize that? Cause sometimes self-awareness is hard yeah. it's, and same with, you know, as, as our family of this health, health family. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why we're not just like one size fits all, but there's sometimes where it's like, eh, I wouldn't put that in my body, mm-hmm. but I have three kids now and uh, I call it the dad tax. You know, if they're having <laughs> goldfish, it's like, okay, they didn't finish the goldfish. I'm going to have a couple of goldfish. Like yeah. you would never catch me eating a goldfish for about 15 years uh, from college till I had kids. But w- what was, what was like your, what'd you notice? I think um, I noticed that I kind of just wasn't living my life the way I mm. used to. Um, you know, socially, I would, yeah, yeah, socially, um, like didn't want to eat foods that didn't weren't cooked in the right oils at a restaurant or this and that. And I still do my best to avoid those oils and sure. unhealthy foods when possible. But I also am just a lot more flexible because. I feel like your mental health is so important too. And I feel like my mental health was suffering when I wasn't being trying social be with perfect. my friends mm-hmm. or worried about traveling. Yeah. Or trying, just trying to be perfect with it. Um, and I think that's something that I kind of really started to learn was your mental health is so important for your physical health as well. Um, so it's not just the foods you're eating or the workouts you're doing. Sure. It's, community and you know your family and your friends and all yeah cal is eating healthy but i don't i don't know if i want to ask cal to go out to dinner or (laughs) you (laughs) know it's like i want to have some fun but i think that's a very insightful thing and Mm -hmm. i think it's normal for anyone that's getting into something that they're passionate about Mm -hmm. and they know the the dangers over here and the positives over Mm -hmm. here it's like okay why would i ever touch that but it's the balance and it's the flow and and having the um grace for yourself that it's okay once in a while to kind of let your hair down and Mm -hmm. do something that just is fun yeah what would you say to somebody that thinks i don't want to eat clean because i don't want to give up fun so Mm -hmm. there's that other extreme yeah of the intensity of no i don't i don't like clean eating is for weird people or like (laughs) other people than me but yet their health is being sacrificed and all they're doing is doing things that make them happy or Mm -hmm. in my opinion I think it's more that they don't want to change yeah yeah I think that change it's easy to be resistant to change um until you start and then you feel once you start eating healthy and exercising I feel like anyone who does that kind of realizes whoa this makes me feel good what was I Um, why did I not do this earlier yeah Yeah. uh uh-huh so I feel like you kind of have to get over that hump of not wanting to start. And then once you do, I feel like most people kind of realize, oh, this does make me feel good. I do. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's my mission. I, the unfortunate thing is I can't do the work and people have to see that themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, even for you or myself, like until you do the work, until you repeat it for more than one second, right? Yeah. You can have a clean plate of food once and it may actually have a negative impact, you know, if you're mm-hmm. too toxic or like yeah. you can't digest foods. But mm-hmm. um, after a while, I think everybody starts to answer their own question if they give it time. Yeah, I always say you want to 
you might not feel great the first few weeks or maybe the first month, but after that, I feel yeah. like once you start actually feeling better and noticing a difference. Um, You'll never go back. Yeah. Who's your audience? I think that's an interesting thing. Like, who who are you trying to influence? Do you know who your audience is, like demographically? Or, yeah, or is it hard to do in this world of social media? Um, I mean, I would say that my... Um, my content could benefit, you know, anyone, no matter your age or boy or girl, whatever. Um, but I would say that primarily it is um, women, at least like in my Instagram uh, insights, it is more women than men. And I would say women between the ages of 16 or 18 up hmm. to like maybe 40 is just from my uh instagram insights sure but obviously how often do you get to meet some of your followers or your fans or your community like how do you what do you try to do so you can connect on that level that not only helps them but helps you kind of really know them mm -hmm. um i mean i've been able to meet a few people in person it's always really Cool and nice when someone comes up and says, "Hey, you know, I've tried your recipes or this or that." Um, that always makes my day, and is super nice of them to go out of their way to say sure. hi. Um, so, I haven't really done any sort of like organized meetup or anything, but I would love to in the Maybe future. Maybe that's coming in the future. Yeah, yeah, I find that interesting. You know, for us when we were doing a lot of virtual stuff. It's challenging, but it's also great because the scale. Mm -hmm. But when you can kind of meet some of them and know that there are people behind the, the scenes that are really cooking the recipes or doing some of the tips yeah. and have experienced some of the results, it's, that's what probably charges your batteries. Yeah, and same thing for even if people just send me a message saying, I made this recipe and I loved it. Or comment it, on it. Or yeah, like, yeah. uh-huh. It really does mean a lot, even though, you know, it took a minute to send. It just... <laughs> <laughs> so... So you talk a lot about nutrition. You have a lot of videos on nutrition, but you do also have a fitness kind of arm of, of what you do. Tell us about your fitness journey from being a tennis player, uh, athlete. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you had a busy household with how many brothers? I Did, didn't you have, have a lot of brothers? Yeah, I have three brothers and two sisters. Oh, so it's a fam big yeah. family. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about your fitness journey from being a college athlete to mm – -hmm to now like was there a gap was there finding a new way w what happened for you yeah so I I always grew up being super active I remember my friend and I would be playing t we'd have our tennis schedule in the summer would be like tennis from 9 to 11 the first class the second class 11 to 1 30 and then we'd take a break and do another class from 3 30 to 5 30 and then finish with you know, um, a workout out on the volleyball wow. court in the sand. So it was like, I grew up very active. Um, and then it kind of just carried through obviously when I kept playing in college. Um, but once I was done playing tennis, I was kind of like, Whoa, like, where do I go from here? Um, and I, there was never really a gap for me, but I think that right when I finished playing tennis, I was kind of like, what, what am I supposed to do? Like a workout for, an hour like I usually playing <laughs> tennis for four hours sure. and then doing a workout after um so I kind of went through a period where I would think you know my workout had to be an hour for it to count or it had to be super high intensity um like hit exercises and my body got really tired out from that and worn out and just kind of depleted mm -hmm. um so I had to find a balance where I started doing a little bit more low intensity workouts, um, you know, not necessarily working out for an hour, but doing maybe a more focused workout for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Um, so now I feel like I have a really great balance between, I still do some high intensity exercises. I still play tennis here and there, not as much as I should, but. Um, Has it shifted to pickleball yet? I have played pickleball once, um, but I just got some paddles, so okay. I might be uh -oh, look might out. Be pick <laughs> look out. Yeah, I know some tennis players want to um, kind of boycott it because it is it is taking yeah. the, the the steam away from tennis a little yeah. bit, but it is a nice transition from the high intensity 
It's just different. Yeah, it's, but it's fun. It's, it's, similar. it's a good workout, I because you're moving can around be. quick. Yeah, back and yeah, forth. it can be. Yeah. Um, so what do you what do you find that you're doing from a fitness standpoint that you really like right now? Um, right now I'm really liking just the mix of. Um, I, I do a lot of at home workouts. I do some in person and I do a good mix of, you know, heavier weight strength, um, some lower intensity like Pilates, and then also a little bit of cardio, especially when I'm at a workout class more so than at home. So it sounds like the same type of balance you bring to nutrition. Mm -hmm. You're really finding into from a a fitness standpoint, what's as we kind of come out of this and talk about being an influencer, we talked about it earlier. What's the hardest part about being a social influencer for you? Um, I think for me it's that sometimes it feels like you have to be on when you aren't feeling it. Yeah, aren't necessarily feeling it. Like, for example, if I'm working with a brand and I have something due, I kind of – have to really hype myself up and get into it. But I feel like I have been able to find a good balance with that as well in terms of, you know, okay, I'm feeling good this day. I'm going to do maybe my um, filming content. And then the uh, the next day where I'm not really maybe feeling it, I'm just going to focus more on my computer work. Um, and also being kind of giving myself grace with if, I don't really feel like posting today. I'm just not going to post. Mm. Um, and just being really authentic and true to myself <clears throat> because I feel like it does really shine through. Excuse me. Um, it does really kind of shine through. People can tell if you're being authentic or not. And I always want to give off, you know. Yeah, that's – I mean, it's – it's. I know as a performer, sometimes you have to perform when you don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the choice you have, right? And and learning that some of those things that you feel like you have to do for someone else, you realize they don't necessarily need it this second either. And so creating that balance of yeah. there is urgency when there's urgency, but then there's times where you can kind of, mm-hmm. I don't feel it. I don't feel like it. Yeah. Do you feel like you ever um, are measured by likes and follows? And like, is that a tough mindset or thinking to to learn yeah um I think that kind of just comes along with it I mean there's always times where you think maybe a post is going to perform really well and it doesn't or maybe you have a post I've had posts where I'm like "Eh, I don't don't even know if I'm going to post this I don't (laughs) don't think I like this and then I post it and it does really well um so I, I mean I feel like there is times where I let myself get a affected by that but I I try to steer away from it and I think especially more um in the last couple years I've kind of started leaning more towards just posting what I feel is authentic or what um you know for example I'll have like a list of recipes that I maybe want to make and um I'm more so doing recipes that actually sound good to me or that like I want to have this week versus like just trying to film like 10 recipes in a day and then kind of forcing myself to do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, we've, sense. Tr- we've tried the 10 recipes in a day. It's like <laughs> you get awesome. through three, three and you're like, how did I think I was going to make yeah, all this Yeah, there's food? no way. <laughs> yeah, we, for our cookbook, I was like, yeah, we got 50 recipes that we're going to do. And it's like, no, you never get to the 50 yeah. recipes. Mm-hmm. What's – uh? You know, there's a lot of negativity on social media. Like, what are some of the things that you're seeing right now that, like, are bothering you? Like, are there are there different kinds of people that you're posting something or content in the health space? Is there anything that comes to mind? That's I can tell you for question. me, I think there's a lot of – you said it earlier. Like, there's there's definitely a science to getting people to follow and like mm-hmm. your stuff. Yeah. But it doesn't always – it's not always the right thing to do. Yeah. Is there anything that you've seen yeah. right now that you try to avoid or maybe you just avoid it at, at all costs? I think I am pretty good about, you know, following people who I feel are positive to me. Um, so I do kind of try to avoid that. But I feel like there always is – you know, there's always going to be, like, phrases or things people say, especially towards health um, – trying to think of an example but kind of just to catch your attention 
um, and get the likes and the follows versus, you know, promoting a good positive message. I think um, – trying to think of an example for is there anything that you're um you know you're saying that there's the algorithm you can kind of know what produces and what doesn't Mm -hmm. produce for for us i'll just use us as example there's some things we could say that kind of true that are more like edgy and like buzzy Mm -hmm. but they're not they're kind of not authentic to what people really need Mm -hmm. um do you find that that's ever been a situation where you've seen maybe maybe it's other people or yourself? Like, I've I've found that we did a couple of videos where it was like, let's try to make the headline or the thumbnail as like Sneaky. as as catchy as possible, and it's like that's not us. Yeah. Do you ever find that that's the challenge, especially this is what you do for a living? Like, yeah, yeah, and I think especially when I was really trying to become a little bit more established and make it a full-time career, sure. I think that it could definitely have been, it was definitely tempting to, yeah, say, kind of get a catchphrase or something like that that may not be promoting the message that I actually believe in, um, but I, I kind of told myself, you know what, I'm gonna build, like, a community that trusts in me and, that I'm always going to keep it real with toward my own beliefs and values. Um, and they no can matter. Feel that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I hope I, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking for an example, I was looking at workouts online today, this morning, I was going to do a workout just from YouTube or something. And there's a lot of things that will catch your eye that are like tiny waist Pilates or like some, just mm. something like that, which yeah. it doesn't really bother me, but it's just kind of like, they're saying that because people see that and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this workout, even though that workout probably isn't, you're not going to sure. do that workout sure. five times. And it's not going to yeah. do a, a tiny waist. It's just the yeah. catchphrase. No, that's, that's interesting. I think we're in a different world. I was listening to a podcast and, um, you know, the influence that social media can have on kids. So mm-hmm. even us, you know, you never know. Uh, my neighbor has a seventh uh, grade daughter and her boyfriend listens to podcasts and he listens to like the Joe Rogan podcast. And it never has crossed my mind that like a seventh grader could be listened to an adult podcast or, yeah. or watching a, a fitness influencer. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's ever bad. It's just a different time. Yeah, definitely. And I think that especially at those younger ages, um, like things like what I had mentioned before, yeah, with, tiny ways yeah to, like can really, you know, yeah, have an, have an impact right. longer term. And so, yeah, I think that was the what I noticed in your stuff is the positive message, the in, integrity around the message. Um, a couple more things before we get out of here, but what's what's your kind of dream collaboration? Have you ever thought about that? As an influencer, you do a lot of collaborations, I'm guessing, yeah. but what's like, who's your who's your influencer? What's Who are some of your influencers or dream influencers that you could collab with? Um... There's some, there's a lot of people that I have followed before I even started my account and kind of, they really inspired my own health journey. Um, But those are more like people, I guess, for a collaboration, like to work with, do you mean? Yeah. I mean, you hear the word collaboration a lot, especially in in your space. Maybe you haven't thought about it, but yeah, somebody that you would want to meet, do a podcast with, uh, make a video with anyone. Um, I would say two people that really kind of sparked my interest and that I've been following for a long time would be, um, Jeanette Aranda from Shut the Kale Up. Oh yeah. And Rachel DeVoe and her accounts, Rachel's Good Eats. Um, those are people who I think are really cool in the social media space. Um, and I guess for working with somebody, just off the top of my head, one that I can would say is maybe Whole Foods. That would oh, be cool to cool. work with them. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, shut the kale up. I've heard of that. And then uh, yeah. Rachel's Good Eats. If yeah. you're out there, Kala wants to, <laughs> to do some videos. Um, what's your vision for your channel? Um, like where do you want to take it? You know, I would love to just kind of keep doing what I'm doing um, and continuing to share and grow as I myself kind of grow and evolve. Um, 
But there's definitely a couple things that I would love to do in the future. I don't know if I'll say them on the air. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can share off the air. Yeah. Stay tuned for part two of yeah. her announcements. <laughs> So I think the goal I wanted to share with the audience, and you've been fantastic, is uh, you do have the power to influence. And when I think of that influence, I think it unfortunately has a little bad rap, I would say, for the general population that doesn't understand it. But when I think of influence, um, there's always been influencers. Social media is just the the medium that you're sharing it. So yeah. like... How do you influence yourself? I mean, before you started your channel, you influenced yourself to do some of these things. You didn't start mm -hmm. it and then work backwards. Some channels do that, but like you had some of these things um, already in the works. How do you influence your coworkers or your community or your kids or your family or in your case, sometimes strangers? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the power we all, I would say maybe take for granted that, um, you know, our actions can influence someone else. Maybe not at the scale that you are, but if it's one person, that's one person. And so anything you'd share on that of how, you know, honored you are to kind of think of yourself in an influential way that, that you are. Yeah, definitely. I, like you mentioned, even if my message, because I've, you know, there's been messages that I've shared that have been vulnerable to, my journey and myself and I'm like if it helps one person then right. that means a lot to me and that makes it worth it um, being vulnerable for however many people to see um, so yeah I think that and like I mentioned you know that one person who stops me and says hey like you know I love your recipes or something you said made a difference to me or messages me and says that that just means so much and I read those messages and I'm just like, wow, I can't believe that, you know, I made a difference in their life or in their health journey. Have you seen the video where this this guy is trying to tell people that their videos, um, even if they're only being seen by a couple hundred, maybe mm -hmm. a thousand, and in the world of scalability, that's not huge numbers. But if you would think of those people in an audience, mm -hmm. or if we were if we were live right now and, and all of your followers were seeing this, how many people that would look like. It starts to get maybe scary, but also the magnitude of it is much more real. Mm -hmm. So I think we get used to seeing like, I don't know, what does Kim Kardashian have? 100 million, 200 million, <laughs> 300 million. Crazy. Like if you put those people in a space, it's mm -hmm. not even fathomable. Yeah. A thousand people in a space is a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, 10,000. I've seen some of your videos get hundreds of thousands, millions of it's a lot of people, and I think that's um, what I've seen from your channel of not losing the integrity, but also having the uh, the vision of what you want to share with the world, and how powerful that influence can be. Yeah. Any anything you'd want to share with the listeners of how to follow you or anything? I know you got some secret uh, announcements coming up, but <laughs> what do, what do you? Uh, what's the best way to follow? follow you um so as we mentioned on instagram is callous clean eats i'm also on tiktok facebook pinterest youtube um i have my website callouscleaneats.com with great recipes and yeah blogs that and makes it easier to find the recipes because you can just search them at the top um, instead of scrolling through the feed um yeah i'd say and one la one last question what's your kind of favorite thing you're into right now whether it's nutrition wise or fitness wise that you really are trying to share as much as you possibly can like is there anything new Ooh. that's got you excited that's a good question sounds like maybe pickleball um, here soon if <laughs> yeah it could be okay this is a really basic one but it's something that i've really been enjoying is going on a walk without my phone mm. just kind of taking a break from social media enjoying the good weather um or taking a break from screens i mean and just kind of Taking a few breaths. It's not anything crazy, but... It's a powerful thing. <laughs> 15 years ago, we didn't even have that like ability to say that that's a thing. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So it, it's crazy time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I think this was a, a pleasure having you on. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully have you back uh, maybe for part two. But as I kind of wrap up, remember, if you're interested in some amazing dessert recipes, fitness inspiration, um, Cal is always bringing great messages and Remember, 
no matter if you're a social influencer or just a parent, um, you have the power to influence another person. We'll see you again next time.